Detroit Pistons relieve Monty Williams of his duties. Big move. Got to respect Tom Gores for that, right? Mm -hmm. You know, he's not afraid to spend some money. <laughs> that's been obvious. So that's what you want in an owner, right? Uh, may not be the biggest basketball guy, but uh, for him to be able to, to, to spend that money, it helps you when you're trying to flip the table with this franchise. So, um, yeah. you know, Monty's gone. Now we have to move on with the coaching search. Uh, JJ Reddick first off the board. Deuce, who do you have in mind? So I have a couple of mine. Um, <laughs> before we get there, I wanted to backtrack about something you just said, talking about Tom Gores, right? And like you said he ate that contract right and a lot of people are saying he's a billionaire who cares it's not a lot of money for him or whatever saying it's a tax write-off who cares okay even if that's the case money aside he could have let his pride keep him from making this move and just trying to see it through we all know he's the reason that monty williams was here so by him eating that contract after one season that's his way of saying i messed up y'all my bad so for that i give him credit just just based on that him just not worried about his ego or whatever and just trying to do what's right for this basketball team i'll give him credit for that we talked about it um earlier there's been some news we found out today that uh jj reddick is as many thought headed to los angeles to coach the lakers and it came out today that the lakers were not considering monty williams i know a lot of people including myself thought that he may be looking ahead that way um if you know jj reddick fell through if hurley didn't work out but it looks like they had their eyes on JJ the whole time, hence the podcast and everything else that was going on with him and LeBron. So there are a few candidates out there now that we are going to get to. A few guys, and I posted about this earlier on Instagram, but we're going to go over a few of these guys. And let's go ahead and take a look at this here, man. So the Detroit Pistons have permission to interview JB Bickerstaff, Micah Nori, and Sean Sweeney for head coaching vacancy. Did you want me to go first or you want to go first as far as who you're feeling? You know, I, I guess I can let you go first, man, because my list is long. Okay, so yeah. we're going to be here a while. So y'all yeah. y'all sit back. Check it out. So of these three, I'm not going to lie to you, bro. Um, I like Sean Sweeney and Mike Nori. Those are the two that I like. Um, I like Sean Sweeney a lot. He's been an assistant for, I think, 10 years now. Mm -hmm. He's been with the Nets. He's been with the Pistons. Before that, I think he was with the Bucks for a few years. The Nets, Bucks, Pistons. He was with us from 2018 to 2021. And now he's with Dallas. So he has plenty of experience as an assistant, right? Proven assistant, been respected around the league. Um, and according to James Edwards, um, shout out to James, players love him. Let's take a look at a few things here. So James tweeted this today. For those unfamiliar with Sean Sweeney, I wrote this profile a few years ago. Giannis told me Sweeney is who helped turn him into a killer. Blake and Andre picked his brain religiously. I thought that was pretty cool because it's not just X's and O's. When he said help turn him to a killer, that means mentally yeah, he helped tired. develop that dog in him. Right, right. Mm -hmm. That we always talk about that always embodies Detroit. So that was interesting. The next thing I want to pull up from James Edwards that he tweeted today was from our very own Isaiah Stewart. And he said, also Isaiah Stewart sat with Sweeney on every plane ride, watching film and taking notes. So he obviously has a lot to offer mm -hmm. if you've got guys, you know, sitting next to coaches on flights. And it's not as if Stu is the only player in this team who's a gym rat, who's looking to learn more, who's a hoop head. That's a lot of our guys in the squad. So Sweeney is somebody who really has a lot of knowledge and can motivate guys to play well. So I really like him for sure. And then, you know, just the fact that there's connective tissue, right, and familiarity with the Pistons, to me, that's a huge plus. So I'll wait to, to talk about Micah Nor if you want to hit on Sean Sweeney first. Uh, Sean Sweeney is fine, man. I, you know, me personally, I'm looking to go in a different direction. Okay. With someone like Sweeney. Uh, but for what, you know, for what it's worth, I mean, I wouldn't be upset with that. You know, obviously, if you got, you know, players like that vouching for you, then, hey, right. you know, I'm all for it. You know, Sweeney is a younger guy himself. Um, like I said, we needed some, we need someone around that's going to instill some type of identity and personality into our team mm -hmm. so if Swinney can provide that that's fine yeah um i have no issues with that i will say though bro i know i led with sean Swinney, and i know he's got the history here with the players and everything like that and the, you know the sound bites and the quotes from Giannis and all that but i must tell you king 
I am a Micah Nori guy. He <laughs> showed me a lot. Um, <laughs> and it's not a hot name here, but he showed me a lot last year. So I'm just kind of getting to why. He is the assistant coach for the T-Wolves, right? Mm -hmm. And he was basically the acting coach for much of the playoffs. Um, when Chris Finch, Finchie had that leg injury, I forgot who ran into him, but he had, I think he nearly broke his leg. He had a bad leg injury in the playoffs. And Mike Nori came and filled right in, man. Didn't miss a beat. And he showed that he's capable of leading the team. Um, he was on the sideline you know, when, they, when the Wolves actually beat the then defending champion Denver Nuggets. And here's what I really like, bro. This really is what I learned about him during the playoffs. He does not let guys quit. Yeah. He does not let guys pack it in. If you guys remember, you probably all remember, we all watched it together, the playoffs. In game seven, the Wolves were down by 20 points. And he did not allow them to give up, nor did he panic, right? They won that game after being down 20 on the road. To the defending champions mm -hmm. that speaks a lot that speaks volumes for me because that's a mindset that your coach has to have and instill in their players they easily could have packed it in bro it could have been one two three cancun they could have been satisfied with their great season and gotten blown off the court but the fact that they continue to play through it bro it shows a great deal of belief especially from a young team and it starts with that coach and so the t wolves roster and style of play as i've talked about before as we've talked about before, is what I want here in Detroit. It all starts with defense for the T-Wolves. And mm -hmm. what intrigues me the most is our potential front court. Mm -hmm. Right? With the right coaching and development, I really believe, bro, that Jalen Duran, at his peak, could be our Rudy Gobert. Less defense, much more offense. I want to make that clear, right? But I think he can be that anchor in the paint. That's number one. And then secondly... I know a lot of you guys are not sold on Isaiah Stewart being a long-term four. And maybe he's not. Maybe he's not. But I've mentioned this before, bro. I believe Stu could be our version of Nas Reed. Six man of the year. Right? He may not be every bit of Nas Reed. I understand Nas Reed is, is a very unique type of player. But with our new assistant coach, shooting wizard Fred Benson, not part of our coaching staff, I want to see what he can bring out of Stu as far as shooting that ball in the mid-range along with the three ball like you always talk about just getting him better quality shots not always just sitting in that corner all the time being real predictable right and Stu is showing at times that he can't put the ball on the floor right. he's shown that right we saw him cross up Joel and beat a couple years ago for a tomahawk dunk so he has the ability I just want to see what he could bring out of Stu right and possibly unlock with him offensively and I think he'd be the perfect coach for what the Pistons have embodied Every regime that's been successful has been because of our defense. Mm -hmm. So I like all of these three, probably Bickerstaff the least, Sweeney probably second, but I think Mike Nori is, is my top pick for sure. Hey man, I can definitely get with that. I, I like I said, my list is extremely long. <laughs> um, I, 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 it's certain things that I just want, you know what I'm okay. saying? And one of those main things is a identity and a defensive attitude. So. Looking at this list, uh, shout out to Rod Beer for putting this out on Twitter earlier. Um, long list, man. Long list of guys. Of course, J.J. Redick was at the top, but we all know he's with the L.A. Lakers now. So I'm mm -hmm. um, just looking up and down this list. Obviously, uh, names like Sam Cassell. Yeah, I see that a lot in the chat, too. Uh, Chris Quinn. Yeah. The reason why I love those type of names is simply because of who they were as players. You know what I'm saying? Uh, these guys had an identity to be pesk out there on the court, you know, so that's the type of identity I want my team to be defensively. I want us to be in them passing lanes, man, getting our hands on the mm -hmm. basketball and just be a headache for teams. Right. Because that defense creates offense. And at the same time, when we go out and we add to this team and get some offensive guys, man, that'll help us win a lot of basketball games. So yeah. those identities alone are huge then you got the fantasy uh type of selections right. like a, like a chauncey billups or yeah yeah but so this list goes as long as to rick patino and mike shasevsky that like, it's wild bro one, like, really... like what like what <laughs> that's only a 50 to one that's crazy that's um crazy. i'm just leaving it to langdon and in the front office to bring the right guys in here that's gonna give this team an identity and a calling card, man. Yeah. You know, when you're looking at bigger staff, when you 
looking at who you mentioned, Sweeney and Frank Vogel, is so many tough hard nosed coaches, man. And I love the fact that we're looking for one right now at this time. Right. Even Mark Jackson is on the list. So Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's it's a great position for the Pistons to be in, man. We just gotta make the right choice and get a guy in here that's serious about that business. Exactly. And and turn this thing around. Hundred percent. I do um I did see a lot of Sam Cassell in the chat. And mm -hmm. I'm not mad at that at all. I did see what Gilbert Arena said. And he made some good points. You know, we have a young team and we need somebody who is able to kind of push them on the court you know mm -hmm. somebody who can still be able to be on that court not just on the sideline somebody who can shoot the ball who can challenge them some a coach that has some elements of basketball that even now they're still better than some players that like shooting you know what i'm saying that kind of thing i think will go a long way as far as just having the ear of this young team we saw last year when Cade was upset and he was trying to talk to monty williams and he was yelling at him in frustration it appeared and Monty just looking at him like and after that it looked like Kate walked away like he don't even care that's what it looked like to me if you go back and watch it Kate is saying something Monty looks back at him and Kate's just like and walks away like this dude don't even care like, I just, I'm, he's just stone facing me right now so I, I have heard too that they had that he did lose in large part a lot of that locker room so it needs to be somebody and Sam Cassell is not gonna like he's he demands respect and he's yeah. seen it all, man. This is the same guy that's won two championships back to back with Akeem Olajuwon. You know what I'm saying? He's he's been around the block a few times. So somebody like that that can demand respect and demand effort. Yeah. He's definitely that guy. Definitely that guy. I would love to have him here too. That's a good pick. Yeah, man. We said some podcast back. We want a coach in here that can demand a room. You know, walk right. in there and say, "Hey, listen, I've done this. I've done that." You know what I'm saying? I don't want it to be as far as you know uh too much of a cocky attitude like for per se matt patricia with the detroit lions you know what i'm saying that was a disaster but i want someone that's going to come in here and demand respect at the same time especially when you got these young guys like you mentioned um that's that you must have that and bringing in a guy like monty at the time we did knowing that he didn't really want to be here in the first right. place was a terrible decision so now you have an opportunity to make that right so I need the Pistons front office to do their job, man, and bring the right guy in here. <laughs> I saw this too. I'm not mad at Chris Quinn either. Because mm -hmm. we know how Miami gets down. Yeah. They're always about defense first. Right. You know, so and anybody who's a disciple of Eric Spolstra, if if they're speaking glowingly of that person, I'm with it. <laughs> I'm yeah. with it for sure. So we, we got some options, man. I, I just hope that they take their time with it. I'm pretty sure they will. I don't think it's imperative to have a coach by the draft. It's a little different than football for me right you know what i'm saying i'm not concerned about the timing of it like now that we have trajan in place make the right choice i will say this if the pistons decide to go and get a coach and make sure that happens before the draft then that tells you the coach's role and when it comes to uh picking the talent on the team yeah, right true. you know a uh, certain type of players that this coach may want to you know go after in this draft right. um and like i said it's all identity based so exactly yeah, like I said, it's something that we just got to keep a, a close eye on, man. And when you knock me down, I'm getting back up. Because when I step on the floor, you know your time's up. I'm on my way up and I'm not going to stop. We headed straight to the top in the low. I got to face it. I got no time to wait.